नमस्कार नो ह्यूमन ट्रैफिकिंग के नए एपिसोड में आपका स्वागत है आज हमारे साथ एक स्पेशल मेहमान है हमारे साथ है ब्रिकुति राय जो नेपाल से हैं और वो एक ह्यूमन राइट जर्नलिस्ट है ब्रिकुति जो है माइग्रेशन कवर करती है लेबर एक्सपाइटेशन मानव तस्करी जैसे विषय को आज हम बात करने वाले हैं ब्रिकुति के साथ जो इंडिया और नेपाल के बीच में जो बॉर्डर्स है किस तरह से वो ट्रैफिकर जो मानव तस्कर है उसको इस्तेमाल करते हुए अभी जैसे हम बात कर रहे हैं इस इस समय न जाने कितने मासूम लड़कियां बॉर्डर से ट्रैफिक हो रही होगी ब्रिकुति जैसे आपने बताया कि आप जब छोटे थे तो आपको पेरेंट्स कहते थे कि बाहर मत निकलो और क्यों कहते थे और क्या रीज़न है सो जस्ट फॉर दी बैकग्राउंड आई एम फ्राम ईस्टर्न पार्ट ऑफ नेपाल सो मेरा घर वो इंडिया के बॉर्डर के साइड में ही है सो आई एम फ्राम विराट नगर एंड द बॉर्डरिंग डिस्ट्रिक्ट ऑन द अदर साइड इज बिहार वेयर दर इज़ अ स्मॉल टाउन कॉल जोगबनी सो ग्रोइंग अप वीड ऑलवेज ग्रू अप विद इज फियर बिक दैट यू नो इफ यू लीव द हाउस और आपको कोई ले जाएगा आपको कोई बेच देगा यू नो द काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स दैट आर पेरेंट्स ए डोंट टेक फूड फ्राम स्ट्रेंजर्स बट इन दिस केस एक और वो फियर का एक लेयर आ जाता था कि दैट यू माइट बी टेकन अक्रॉस बॉर्डर बिकॉज इट वॉज सपोज टू बी अ स्केरी रूट द बॉर्डर राइट नेक्स्ट टू अस ऑल दो विश टू गो टू शॉप देयर एंड यू नो इट्स राइट देयर बट वो डर हमेशा रहता था एज अ स्मॉल किड दैट द बिगेस्ट फियर इज दैट समबडी विल टेक मी अवे एंड देन आई एल गेट सोल्ड ऑफ लाइक आई आई एज अ किड वो अच्छी तरह से यू कैन नॉट प्रोसेस वॉट 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 दे मैंट बट ग्रोइंग अप वी रियलाइज दैट यू नो लेटर ऑन वेन आई बिकेम अवेयर अबाउट दिस थिंग्स तो हम एवरी टाइम वी जब हम बॉर्डर क्रॉस करते थे तो वी यूज टू सी ऑल दीज एन जी ओज देर देर बोर्ड सेंग बी केयरफुल ऑफ ह्यूमन ट्रैफिकर्स थिंग्स आई दैट सो Uh, growing up, I always saw that, but was never able to fully process the scale of it and what it really meant. But there was always that fear, and in fact, just a few years ago, so Nepal has um, um, a huge stretch of um, its land that borders India in the southern belt, right? So um, we have this open border, of course, with India, uh, for which I think we are grateful, both sides, especially हम जैसे families who live on the border, we've we've been able to get so much of that you know free mobility access to work everything but right. there's always that fear of you know all kinds of uh, people being uh, taking advantage of that especially of girls and women who jo vulnerable bhi hote hain to uh, just to give another story about you know my my brother in law uh, he also lived in one of this uh, one of these bordering towns of birganj um and um unhone kaha tha ki jab wo lagbhag 4 or 5 years ke the to उनको एक्चुअली वो सम वन हैड ट्रिक्ट हिम बाई गिविंग हिम सम चॉकलेट्स एंड ट्राई टू ऑलमोस्ट गेट हिम अक्रॉस द बॉर्डर ही वॉज फोर फाइव ईयर अक्रॉस बॉर्डर ऑफ इंडिया या सो अभी तो हम सब यू नो वी कैन लाफ एट इट से बट दैट दैट्स अ रियल थ्रेट बहुत सारे लोगों के लिए जो बॉर्डर वो सीमा के नियर रहते हैं तो उन लोगों के लिए दिस इज़ अ रियल थ्रेट एंड बट देन दिस इज़ अदर साइड ऑफ द when you sort of like look at the other side of the narrative uh, these kind of narratives might also be restraining women's mobility in a lot of sense for example um mere ek dost wo research ke liye india um, um, i think nepal ganj gayi thi wo uh, another town again in the southern belt in tarai that borders india so you know you of course you want to go across and you know like look at you know like go to some market or just see what the place is like to try something aur usko border mein स्टॉप किया था और एंड शी इज़ एन अडल्ट वुमन ऑलमोस्ट इन अ थर्टीज यू नो लाइक एंड शी वॉज देर फॉर वर्क और उसको जाने नहीं दिया बिकॉज दे सस्पेक्टेड दैट हाउ कैन अ वुमन अ यंग नेपाली वुमन बी ऑल बाई अर सेल्फ ट्राइंग टू क्रॉस द बॉर्डर इतना तक हुआ कि उसको अपने पापा को फ़ोन करना पड़ा ऑन यू नो द पुलिस वुड वो उन उसको यू नो लाइक दे वुड बिलीव हर so then but then so that creates this whole other dimension right. right like some of the women might actually know that you know unfortunately there is no opportunity for me um so like and and a lot of the researchers i also say that uh, a lot of the time they are either being taken there by families or relatives that you know so there is this whole other dimension but i think we also need to change wo uh, uska jo narrative hai 
So they're always saying like, oh, XYZ organization rescued women and girls. Right. And we talked about this earlier also. The, as soon as you put the rescue narrative that right. the women are helpless, they don't know about what is happening, then it sort of distorts the entire conversation where we are not hearing from the women who might have been quote-unquote rescued. Um, what, what, what happens to them after they are brought back like that? And did, were they brought back on their will or not? So, so we have to have a larger conversation. Unfortunately, in Nepal, it's still the same. I'm sure in India mm -hmm. also, there's this quote-unquote raid that happens and then they sort of like rescue these women. Right. And this whole idea that women were sold off. Right. As soon as you take some irregular route. And like I mentioned earlier, in especially uh, Nepal ki case, mein, because government has so many restrictions hai around women's mobility, mm -hmm. um, uh, they can't take up the same jobs that women, men in their country can. So obviously they will resort to um, taking the irregular route. And they might not necessarily always be working in um, as, as, as sex workers. They might be going there to work as a domestic worker or to take up a job at a factory. But they are having to use these routes which have traditionally been used by human traffickers, uh, which has exploited a lot of young girls and women. But it's also necessary to see the um, other side because uh, what happens is the policy is a good intention mm -hmm. uh, to make sure they're regulating a, a lot of things but then they don't realize the real life Im implications of right. for all the girls and women right. uh, who are just trying to make a living. Uh, everybody wants a job, uh, a better life, and they are just looking for the opportunities. And unfortunately, uh, instead of making sure how we can regularize those kind of channels and uh, provide awareness that this is what you can do, mm -hmm. up, up, uh, uh, job these are the things you need to look at but our whole awareness awareness campaign is about oh you're going to be trafficked oh watch out mm -hmm. uh, there are you know like monsters out there which sort of like and, and thinking that women cannot make decisions for themselves and I think we really need to change this narrative around oh humne XYZ mahilao ko rescue kia. Right. And then what do you do after right, that? So right. I think that that's a big concern. Yeah. So we see a lot many people you know, coming and going you know, across the border, like yes, in between yes. India and Nepal, right? And as we speak, we, uh, there might be you know, hundreds of people like, you know, crossing the border at the, at the moment, especially young women who are desperate to you know, go out of their states, uh, for, out of their district looking for jobs and op opportunities. As you said, there are multiple factors that restrain a women movement, including uh, uh, the facility to, to find a proper job or be paid as equal as their male companies counterpart and maybe that could be one of the push factors that uh, you know uh, influence so many women younger yeah. women taking this journey all alone now yes. we see so many young women yeah. volunteering themselves like as young as 16 15 yeah. if I'm not wrong yeah. right to go with the agents and traffickers yeah. to reach India and via uh, using uh, India as a transit route yeah. they are going to other countries yes, as well yes, yes. so do you think the, the uh, since so much of cross-border proliferation is uh, you know uh, trespassing is hap happening uh, some way do you feel as a journalist while researching this case for so many years that both the India and Nepal government are profiting out of the you know miseries of these people I mean, there are uh, there there isn't enough draft uh, policy that can actually uh, curb the situation. And as you rightly said, uh, this is my this would be my you know second question too. Uh, that uh, rescue, we, there's so much of focus and attention on the rescue yes, part, so but we never talk about the rehabilitation process, yeah. right? What after the the life the life after rescue yeah. of these young people, including yeah. men, yeah. right? Yeah. So. Uh, do you think the stakeholders, the, the state actors, are majorly responsible for what are, whatever is happening right now? I think the first thing is that Nepal itself has to... Go in English. Sorry. Uh, the thing is, uh, Nepal, it's, Nepal has to, first as a country, in, uh, the policy makers need to understand why are women finding themselves in these routes, in these dangerous routes. Right. Um, and like I said earlier, not everyone is going there, uh, might not, they might not be tricked. They might know exactly why they're going because that's the only way for them to get to, let's say, a country in Dubai or, or, or beyond in the Gulf to look up for jobs that they, that they are trying to get because uh, Nepal's policy won't, let, won't allow them as easily to 
just use the airport and fly out right right so i think it's really important what what is happening and also i think there are a lot of push factors not just like there's been several uh, instances in the past also where, while i was reporting right after the aftermath of the 2015 earthquake mm -hmm. where a lot of uh, young girls and women went to ended up in India looking for better opportunities mm -hmm. because they had lost their homes in the earthquake. Uh, there was um, there was little support in terms of rebuilding. It, it takes a while, and the scale was massive. So you know, um, but people need to feed themselves and their family, and there are so many other things that you know that mm -hmm. uh, that need to be factored in. So I think the government really needs to look into the policies and I don't know if bilateral sort of like um, understanding or talks or you know has really happened because it's almost like um, we ex rescued your people now we're sending them back so that's not the kind of dialogue or partnership that bordering countries need to have I think it needs to go beyond that and 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 really understand why is it that these women find themselves where they are um, so I think uh, at this point, I'm not really aware of how much it's being talked about because right now a huge number of Nepalese are trying to um, go to countries in the Gulf or increasingly to Europe. So, so I don't know how much conversations the two countries are having, and it's almost like um, there is some collaborations. Obviously, when they, you know, when they find certain uh, find Nepali women, for example, then they will have to reach out to the government, but. I'm not sure if the conversation is going beyond that quote-unquote raid or rescue operation that they claim to be join, doing mm. jointly. Um, but yeah, a lot, a lot needs to be done in terms of um, really going beyond this idea that the state is just there to protect the women. This very protectionist approach that we see at least in Nepal when it comes to women's mobility. I think we need to go beyond that mm -hmm. and and look at women as individuals as 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 people who just want better lives for themselves and their family and what can the state have a role to facilitate that rather than curb um, their movement and make them more vulnerable to uh, to uh, dangerous and risky situations. Right, right. So as you said, the aftermath of uh, the earthquake in 2015, uh, yeah. uh, let so many people, you know, uh, flee from there, not flee to you know, uh, leave, for leave their places yeah. looking for opportunities. And as a result, we saw so many indigenous women from indigenous groups, you know, uh, coming to uh, India and now uh, uh, being victim of uh, sexual slavery and looking for uh, better opportunities ahead. Some are still being forced to continue as a, you know, uh, sex workers. And so I was, I met a couple of women in uh, uh, the, the, the one who got rescued from the GB road. And we, while doing the research and talking with all the women, we found that most of the women belonging to a particular, which I'll not like to name right now, uh, a, a particular indigenous community and as we dig in deeper we found that this uh, the village that those you know these uh, villages are getting you know uh, vacant uh, the houses are without much many women right yeah, now yeah. Uh, uh, because of this factor yeah. uh, does does this not bother Nepal's government that you know the women indige indigenous women from Nepal are you know, disappearing yeah. Uh, because of the you know uh, lack of opportunities and yeah. whatever happened after met of uh, Nepal tragedy, most of them haven't received compensation as yet, right? Mm -hmm. They have not received their justice, whatever happened due to the natural calamities. So, if you can you know uh, yeah. talk about a little bit about this. Yeah, the earthquake reconstruction definitely I feel like just added more stress. Like was another push factor. It took a while to get the relief and resources obviously the scale of the disaster was another level so that might have also aided but i don't think again i think the gendered lens is again missing in these things also mm -hmm. we're just talking about buildings okay we need to build house right right so some of the things that came out immediately after the earthquake was people were just giving okay food and like tarps food tarps food tarps but you forget when you don't have that gen like you know like a gendered lens to any situation for example a lot of women didn't have uh, sanitary napkins or you know like h how are they managing mm -hmm. sanitation uh, you know that kind of like intersectional lens was missing in, in, in the initial days also but going back to uh, whether or not the government like you know what what the state can do I think um, and it's it's just like it's just unfortunate that um, uh, the, the consecutive 
um, governments that we've had, you know, f now it's been so many years, but uh, there is no assurance of a, a better future, a better life for, for, for Nepalese in every class and every caste and every group increasingly. And of course, people who are already marginalized, people who are already coming from um, indigenous groups who are already historically marginalized, for them, it is... Um, um, it, it just seems, especially like you said, the villages, when everybody is leaving, you just think that is the uh, natural thing to do, right? The next natural step uh, when you're looking for opportunities because there's nobody there, no mechanism, support systems in place to really uh, tell you that, okay, this, these are the opportunities that you could get or will do something. Um, and this is not just something that you just, these are not handouts people are asking, looking for, right? There needs to be like a sustained effort to make sure that uh, opportunities are there, uh, to make sure that people are, people talk about this freely. We need lots of examples for people to see, especially young women and girls, um, to hear from women who might have taken similar route and then, you know, coming back and if how their life is and what they've been able to do. Because a lot of the times, um, and something we've already talked about is that they they are not aware about the um, actual information also in many cases. And mm -hmm. I don't think it's just their fault. It's just that who are they surrounded by? What kind of information is getting getting to them? How how is it getting to them? And now mm -hmm. with um, you know internet and smartphone, mobiles in everybody's like almost everyone's access. Um, it is for. I feel they are at a much better place that they are. They now know they don't. They might. They might just look it up, or they might be more more aware about what they might be getting themselves into. But I feel like as long as the situation in the uh, in their homes, home country, in the villages improve, it's it's very difficult. And this improvement is not just possible by the effort of the community members themselves. There has to be some sort of like sustained intervention at all points to make sure that um, if a village is being emptied of young women or young men, then there is a problem where the state needs to step in. Um, and that is something we read in the news, we're just like shocked. And then we move on to something else. Right. So um, I, I don't have the answer. I'm a journalist. But I hope policymakers who've been working on this for the longest time will come up with, um, will be able to address it effectively. Because, of course, there's so many crises that, um, uh, that, that takes away our attention all the time. But because uh, we are unfortunately, we've been witnessing this kind of um, exodus of, of women, girls, men, from particular places, from particular communities at such rate. I think it's really, um, th there needs to be much more discussions than just like one off case or like right. when one big thing happens and like they are brought back or, or something really terrible happens to we. We can't just wait for something really terrible to happen to someone to really talk about it. My last question to you is, you know, some advice for debugging journalists who are uh, quite, um, eager to cover topics such as human rights or labor rights or you know uh, migration trafficking often we see that the uh, most journalists do not uh, try to learn the basic you know ethics uh, while covering uh, such sensitive uh, stories so from your perspective from your experience if you like to share some quick you know uh, tips for the yeah. journalists who cover such sensitive stories yeah I feel like journalists, young, especially young journalists, it's not that they don't want to learn about. I think we need to shift the narrative again here. It's about whether or not they're getting the resources at an early age. Like, you know, you, when you started journalism, when I started my journalism, I was very fortunate enough to, to have um, editors and mentors and senior journalists who were there to, like, talk to me about the not just the craft, how to tell a good story, but also how to report with care. Mm -hmm. This is something that I, I hope younger journalists when they join um, uh, you know like newsrooms they are taught about this not just about how to write in you know, 5w1h kind of right yeah those questions not just answering those questions but also um, thinking about uh, you know talking about informed consent you know when mm. you're reporting especially in these cases where uh, going beyond the breaking the news right. or like oh it's a scoop so you know uh, because a lot of people don't even know what it is to because a lot of these um, people, especially in cases of, uh, you know, uh, the kind of exploitation we're talking about, the kind of people who might be exploited, they might not even be aware about how, 
they might first of all they might be interviewed for the first time they might not be aware what the end product is going to look like so i feel like there needs to be a constant um awareness in in journalists young and old mm-hmm. that uh, they have a responsibility towards the people they're interviewing and right. and they're not just sources from whom we extract right. we we are they are telling us their stories and we have to be very Responsible in the way we tell them. Technical reasons के कारण जो है हमें अपना वीडियो यहीं पर ही एंड करना पड़ रहा है इसके लिए हमें काफ़ी खेद है आशा करते हैं कि जितना भी इन्फॉर्मेशन हमने आपके साथ शेयर किया है वो आपके बिल्कुल काम आएंगी और इसको आगे ज़रूर फॉरवर्ड करें यहाँ पर ही हम स्पेशली धन्यवाद करना चाहते हैं ब्रिकुति राय का जो जर्नलिस्ट है नेपाल से और माइग्रेशन ह्यूमन राइट्स लेबर इस पर काफ़ी लिखती है इनको आप आगे भी सुन सकते हैं इनके अपने पॉडकास्ट चैनल पे जिसका नाम है बोजू बजाय बोजू बजाय का मतलब होता है नेपाली में एल्डरली वीमेन माने बुजुर्ग महिलाएं ये सोशल uh, इश्यूज ही पॉलिटिक्स और काफ़ी विभिन्न विषय पे बात करती है इनको ज़रूर सुने और सब्सक्राइब करें और साथ ही साथ हमारे चैनल को भी सब्सक्राइब और शेयर करना ना भूलें शुक्रिया